Hello, hello. How are you doing today? Let's talk about result atrophy and overcoming resistance. This past weekend, I sat down to do something that I had been resisting for ages. It was suggested to me by a coach years ago, and I wanted to do it, but I haven't wanted to do it at the same time. You know what I mean? And so this is like a lot of lawyers I talk to who want to do something, but they keep putting it off. They hit resistance. Resistance is normal. It's even desirable because it tells you that there is a next level for you. If we don't move through that resistance and into that next level, our results atrophy. They stay the same. We don't get better and we don't get the life that we want. In this episode, you're going to learn how you can prevent result atrophy. So you can hit your next level, whatever that may be. The task that I took on to help me prevent result atrophy by moving through my resistance was sitting in silence for four hours on my own. Yes, willingly, not doing a thing for four hours. And that may sound like a nightmare to you. You can guess why I was hitting resistance. About 10 years ago, I went on a meditation retreat. We had these long periods of meditation but it really wasn't like four hours at a time. And we, I was doing it with other people. So you really were encouraged to just stay there. Now you might be a hell no to sitting in silence for four hours, but there are tasks and there are goals that you have been putting off. You've hit resistance and your results in your life are atrophying. So some of the tasks you might be avoiding are building your book of business or finally getting control of your calendar. Maybe you're avoiding having difficult conversations with your assistant whose work isn't up to par or a client who hasn't paid. You might be avoiding setting up new systems in your practice that are going to make your life easier. You may be avoiding reviewing your firm's numbers and telling your clients that you're going to raise your rates. We're going to tackle resistance to these and other things that you might be avoiding head on in this episode, because if we don't, our results atrophy, they stagnate. We live in the past, in our past results. So we have to move through resistance to grow and create our future intentionally and create new, stronger, better results for ourselves. Think about the word resistance. In the fitness world, resistance training creates muscle. We want to lift heavier and heavier weights and become capable of handling more and more resistance to grow our muscles. If we don't lift weights, our muscles stay the same or they atrophy. We want to face resistance head on when we're working out. We use resistance, in this case, the weights, as a tool to help us expand our capabilities. In our day-to-day lives, though, we tend to use resistance as a sign to back off, to stop. We don't think of resistance as a tool. Instead, when we feel it, we tend to think something has gone wrong. For me, resistance feels like in my body, I'm holding my breath. And I feel a tightness in my chest and my shoulders when I think about something that I'm avoiding. I notice that I ignore the task. I don't put it on my calendar and I just don't do it. I've even been known to put it on my calendar and just totally ignore it like it wasn't even there. But thinking about the task is still taking up valuable brain space and energy because in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about how I need to do it. And I'm a little restless because I know that it's something that I want to do and I'm not doing it. Nothing has gone wrong when we feel this. It just means that we've hit some resistance and we want to take note of it. I was talking to a lawyer recently who said she wanted to be a coach, but she couldn't get lawyers to take her up on coaching. Her brain told her that because she was hitting this resistance, that it meant to stop her dream of coaching. She actually said to me that she knew the universe was not conspiring against her, so her failures must mean that she should stop. But she told me that she truly felt called to be a coach and to help other people And these two statements are inconsistent, okay? Think about it because I believe we aren't given a desire unless we're meant to grow into the person who is 
going to have it. And that desire is meant to evolve us as humans. And I told her that if she truly believed that she was meant to help people in this way to keep going, I did, I created a coaching business and if I can do it, she could do it. And the resistance wasn't a sign to stop. It was a sign to dig deep and keep going. And that's how I thought of it. And that's why I created what I wanted to create. It's the same for any dream we have or anything we know is the right thing to do. And you know when you're not doing what needs to get done. So ask yourself what you're avoiding right now. There's resistance showing up anytime we're avoiding something. And if we let that resistance rule us, we make our lives small. We don't go after what we feel called to do and we make our life a lot harder, right? So if you're avoiding a difficult conversation, you're going to notice that your life is just a little bit harder. You're feeling a little bit more on edge. You're not maybe playing as big as you want to because you're concerned about how the other person is going to respond if you have that conversation with them. So you want to move towards the resistance, just like you would if you were weightlifting. And once you do, you're going to feel less and less resistance from the weights you're currently struggling to lift and become capable of getting to the next level. Then the next, our skills become stronger. We uplevel our capabilities to have the goal we desire and to handle those tasks our brain used to avoid. You become more self-confident. You become more decisive. You become less reactive to stress and feel more in control. You stop caring about what other people think about your decisions and behavior. It becomes easier for you to have difficult conversations. That's because you get good at showing up and stepping into the resistance at lower levels, and that got you to add on weight and get to the next level. In our lives, if we don't move into the resistance, our results atrophy. We don't gain the self-confidence we need because we're not doing the reps. We're overthinking instead of making decisions because we're not learning the skills we need to become decisive. To make change, we need to do something different than we've ever done before. And that requires feeling resistance and taking action anyway. What a lot of us do is tell ourselves it's too hard or maybe it's not meant to be or it'll get better eventually on its own, hopefully. Instead, what we need to do is to recognize that resistance is normal and we have to move towards the resistance to get what we want. When our brain stops doing new things, we stop learning new skills. We feel mentally weak because we haven't been lifting the weights. Our spirit wastes away and we begin settling for what we have instead of going out and taking what we want for ourselves. Coaching is resistance training. I teach lawyers which weights to lift and how to lift them, and then they can start lifting heavier ones and build their capacity to get to their next level. They keep elevating themselves and they keep getting better and better results. It's not a coincidence. It's designed that way. It's a workout. And just like in fitness, we can always start a new workout routine. It doesn't matter if you failed a hundred times before or you've given up for a while, all that matters is that you have enough belief in yourself to try 101 times or to start over. One of the problems that I see is that people give up on themselves too soon when they hit resistance. In the gym, they think they should be able to lift 50 pound weights right away when they haven't been lifting in ages. So they're embarrassed to pick up the five pound weight because they're afraid of what people think. And then the people who let that fear, that resistance rule them will not work out. They'll just figure, oh, I guess it's not meant to be. And they'll come up with all these excuses like, you know, I don't have time anyway, or, you know, it's really not that big a deal, even though there's part of them that really wants it and like is thinking about it and it's in the back of their mind and they want to improve how they feel in their body. The people who would rather feel a little embarrassed now because they know they'll feel so proud and accomplished when they can get to that 50 pound weight are the ones who are going to show up at the gym and do the work and start whenever they need to. And I see this mental resistance with lawyers too. Lawyers tell me they think they should be able to figure out how to manage their time on their own. I mean, after all, they went to law school. How hard can it be to really figure out how to use the calendar, right? And how to use your time effectively. And when they can't do it on their own, they think there must be something wrong with them or that it's just impossible or that it's the planner and they just haven't found the right planner. 
So think about the logic of this in terms of fitness. We hire a personal trainer not because we can't figure it out on our own or because we haven't found the right weights. We could do the research to find out how many reps we should do and how many sets we should do and how much cardio we should do and what stretches are best for the muscles that we want to grow. We hire a personal trainer because we expect them to have done that work for us so we can just do the important stuff and that's growing our capacity growing our capacity to lift heavier weights, to grow into the body that we want. They inspire us to show up for ourselves and try new things that we might not have thought to try, or they have tips to make the workouts more effective that you can only learn with lots of trial and error. And that takes time and energy. A lot of the trial and error is cut out for you because the trainer is more experienced. Yeah, you still have to show up and lift the weights, but you don't have to spend time figuring out all the other stuff. And that's why coaching is so valuable, whether it's in a fitness context or in the context where I help my clients take care, control of their practice, take control of their time and energy. You save so much time and energy figuring it out because the coach already knows the problems that are going to come up and how to handle them because of their experience and little tips that you've never thought of before. Another problem I see when people come up against resistance, whether it's in the gym or it's in their law practice, is when they start and stop moving towards their goals. Imagine being in a car with a brand new driver. They don't know the balance between the clutch, the brake, and the gas pedal, so the car jerks back and forth and starts and stops. Same thing goes for lawyers. When we start something new, it feels jerky because we're just learning the skill of moving through resistance. So they feel like they're like stopping and starting, stopping and starting. And they're moving inconsistently towards their goal. They're not able to go in a straight line yet. And so then when they don't see themselves moving as fast as they think they should be moving, they back off and they tell themselves it's not working. Now, in the gym, we can't expect two days of workouts to keep us strong, just like we can't do today's um, calendar just once or twice, follow it once or twice to achieve our goals in a month from now. We actually have to keep being consistent. We have to teach ourselves to be consistent. When we're inconsistent, that's a sign that there is resistance there. And when there's resistance that we're not moving towards, our results atrophy. We have to take responsibility for our results and we have to teach ourselves to recover from this resistance faster, whether we're learning it on our own or we're hiring a trainer or a coach to help us. So that's one of the reasons I teach lawyers how to stop beating themselves up. And I talk about compassion in this podcast so much. And I teach you to put yourself on your calendar first. Make me time on your calendar first. It's because it helps with recovery. It helps us recharge our battery so we can show up the next day and be consistent and work through resistance. You might find yourself really excited to start something new at the beginning of the week, but by Wednesday, you've given up and you're in a funk and that's totally normal. What you want to observe is if you are improving your resistance recovery time because starting and stopping is hurting your momentum. We want to just get you better and better at recovery so that you can move through the resistance faster. In the gym, you're building your muscles two days, and then if you stop for a month, it's like you're totally starting over, and that's not going to help you get the results that you want. That's why people hire a personal trainer. It's to help with consistency and learning how to recover. Okay, so here's what I want to share with you about moving through resistance, and I'm going to use my meditation experience to give you this framework. You can use it with anything. Okay, the framework is observing what's happening before, during, and after the task you want to take on, the goal you want to take on, so that you can see the resistance and move through it. Because you're going to do this over and over again, just like you wouldn't go to the gym once and then that's it. You wouldn't just do your calendar once and that's it. You keep going. You keep doing it. You wash, rinse, repeat. So and I'm also going to share you with you some tips for moving through that resistance as we go. So here's just a little bit of background info on what I did. What I was doing was a little bit different than maybe your traditional meditation. Um, and I know that can be really intimidating for people. So I want to say something briefly about this. 
I actually encourage doing short meditations, like five to 20 minutes. You don't need to go for silence and you definitely don't need to go to, to four hours, okay, to get any benefit from this. This was something that was for me very personal. And so I do not even, you don't even have to do this to get the benefit. I don't want you to think that at all. Okay. The goal in most meditations is not complete silence because our brains are, you know, they're always chattering. What the goal of most meditation is, is just to observe that you are having thoughts. And also know I am a regular meditator. So I wasn't trying to lift a 50 pound weight when I haven't been lifting five pound weights. I meditate anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours pretty regularly. So this wasn't something that was a huge, well, it was, it felt like a huge jump, but it wasn't really a huge jump for me. I've been lifting the weight, so to speak. So I want you to think about your goal that you have right now or a task that you've been avoiding. Okay, get that clear in your mind right now. So my task was to sit for four hours in silence. Now, there's three steps to making any goal happen, any task happen. One is to plan. The second is to take action. The third is to evaluate what happened before you do it again. Now, we don't need perfection for the plan. Perfection interferes with taking action. We don't want to get into perfectionism. It doesn't have to look perfect. You And I love the um, idea that if you waited for a product to be shipped out you to be perfect, you've waited too long. You've got to get an iteration out before you like start tweaking. You want to see how it works in the real world before you start making any adjustments, before you can make any adjustments. So that's what we're doing here. We want a real life experience so we can go back and we can make adjustments. All right. So here's what my step one planning looked like. I decided ahead of time that this was something that I wanted to do. I put it on my calendar when I would be the most likely to do it, because if it's not on your calendar, it's not real. If you don't actually have the time blocked out, it's not going to happen. I anticipated as many obstacles as I could to getting it done to the best of my ability. Again, you're going to see in a second, not perfectly, and that was perfectly okay. Uh, I also decided ahead of time, notice I'm saying that a lot, I decided ahead of time. We want to think through what's going to happen before it happens. We want to decide what happens before it happens. When we go to the gym, we decide I'm going to the gym, I'm going to go talk to my trainer. Trainer's going to tell me what to do. You can tell yourself what to do too. So I decided ahead of time not to have any expectations. In other words, if I was distracted, if I was interrupted, I wouldn't beat myself up. I would just take a breath and I would feel my feelings and I would keep going. A lot of times we take interruptions, like people walking into our office as a sign, well, we just can't do it now. Most of the time, it's just our brain trying to avoid Hey, just notice that. Here's what my step two actions looked like. I looked at my calendar and I already knew ahead of time what my brain does. Like I teach my clients this, just expect that your brain is not going to want to do what's on your calendar and that it's going to come up with all of the excuses. Like you don't have to do it. You can do it next week. You deserve a break. You work so hard today. Just notice when that comes up. Don't make it mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. You get to just reroute your brain and say, nope. Um, I'm still going to do it. So I reminded myself that I've been wanting to do this for a while. So let's do it. Then I sat down. I noticed my thoughts and I kept noticing my thoughts over and over again. I reminded myself that this was normal. Someone texted me and I thought to myself, I should have put my phone on silent. I ignored it. I took some breaths. I got back to the meditation. Then I checked my text. I decided that that was okay to check, fine, but don't respond to it. So I put the phone aside, closed my eyes. I kept going. I had some moments of silence in my brain, and then I felt antsy and I felt annoyed. I reminded myself that was normal, felt my feelings. Normal, just remind yourself whenever you feel resistance, it's normal. It really helps put you back on track to let your brain know it's okay, nothing has gone wrong. You can get back to whatever it is you were doing, whatever task you have at hand. I thought about dinner and how I needed to eat soon because my window was closing and I needed to eat before my friend called. And then I got to the point where I was like, okay, I need to check my phone. And I saw that three and a half hours had passed. I decided to stop so I could eat in my window. And then I felt proud of my accomplishment. 
a lot of you beat yourself up when you don't accomplish the goal as you imagined it. And that prevents you from trying again. You'll put it off more. You'll avoid it more. You are hindering your resistance recovery when you do this. Celebrate your accomplishment and redecide if you want to try again. Don't redecide right away. You can do that later. All right. Not celebrating is also going to create resistance to doing the third part of this, which is the evaluation. It's the necessary step to improving before you try again. So celebrate. If you went to the gym and you noticed you weren't lifting as well as you expected, you probably wouldn't tell yourself that there was something wrong with your body. You'd probably ask yourself questions like, did I get enough sleep last night? Am I getting enough protein? Am I coming down with a cold? You know, you, you wouldn't like internalize it. You would just start problem solving. So that's what we want to do is we want to celebrate so we can get right into any problem solving that needs to happen. Step three is the evaluation. What you want to do in any evaluation is ask yourself three questions. What went right? What didn't go as expected? And what will I do differently next time? It's important that you do it in that order because when you start with what went right, you help your brain get past any uh, resistance you might be feeling. So here's how my evaluation went. What went well? I set the timer aside on my calendar. Uh, I set this time aside on my calendar. It was decided ahead of time that it would be done and I was not going to let anything interfere with it this time. I said no to myself when my brain said I could do it next week. And that's, remember, a sign of resistance. So just keep an eye out for it. And when I notice that resistance, which you'll have when you do anything that's on your calendar almost, I noticed it and I redirected my brain to focus on my breath. That resistance looked like feeling antsy when I was in my meditation, irritated at one point when I, my brain wasn't behaving the way I wanted it to. I didn't get angry at myself when that happened. Instead, I just took a breath and I, I returned back to what I wanted to, to get to, which was the meditation. I didn't get angry at myself when a friend texted and I checked it. I let it go and I kept going. I didn't respond to the text, even though I felt an urge to, and I set the alarm for four hours so I knew, knew when it would be done. So these are the same problems that are going to come up when you have a goal. And they're a sign of resistance that you'll need to learn to move through to hit your goal. You won't want to put it on your calendar. For my clients, I see this and I see them not wanting to use their calendar in the way they know will give them the best results. They'll take shortcuts that prevent them from using their time wisely. And I talked about that in the last episode. Or you'll maybe put it on your calendar, but your brain will come up with an excuse not to do it. That's normal. But you are the boss of your brain. And this is the way you prevent result atrophy. I know it doesn't always feel like you're in control of your brain. But think of it this way. Your brain's job is to be a toddler and to throw a fit. And then there's your higher self, the parent, who knows what you want. And the parent needs to tell the toddler what to do or you're never going to get the results that you want. You've done this before. You went to law school. You probably weren't super keen to study for finals, but you did. Why? Because you told your brain to sit down and study over and over and over again, even when you didn't want to. You're going to have distractions and you'll need to refocus. You'll want to tell yourself you're bad at X, Y, Z. To overcome this kind of resistance, learn how to have compassion for yourself. And I did an episode of How to Talk to Yourself that I recommend listening to. I'll link to it in the show notes. It's much easier to refocus when you don't spend time beating yourself up. Your brain is going to tell you that you're tired or you've never done it before. So why bother? But it's up to you to talk to yourself when these kinds of thoughts come up and remind yourself why you're lifting this weight. Is it because you want to grow your practice to feel better, to have a better firm culture, to have um, better performing employees, to have a feeling of accomplishment at the end of the day? Remind yourself of your why. The second part of the evaluation, remember there's two more. The second part of the evaluation is to ask what did not go as planned. So for me, that my friend would text me while I was seated, that leaving my phone on would be a problem. I 
actually had it on in case a different friend called me, which leads me to my next issue. I did not anticipate that having my meditation back to back with a planned call with a friend would be an issue. <laughs> I just didn't even cross my mind. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss her call if she called a bit early, so I left the phone on. So here's where I see lawyers hit resistance when they get to this part of the evaluation. They tell themselves that all the things that went wrong are why they can't do it. They tell themselves that these are signs that they shouldn't be doing what they want to do, just like the lawyer who wanted to coach lawyers but said she couldn't get clients. The third part of the evaluation is to ask this, what would I have done differently? This is where you hypothesize what might help you improve the result. Here's my hypothesis. Try putting it on my calendar on a Saturday early morning because I think my brain is usually quieter in the morning. Plan the meditation with buffer time so I'm not thinking about it buff bumping up against another thing on my calendar, which is what I teach my clients, right? So if they have an important client call, they want to give themselves plenty of time to take that call in case it goes over in time. Place my phone on silent. Even if my friend called, I could have always I could have just called her back, right? Like it wouldn't have been a problem. But this was about me managing my mind around her expectations. And the next time I can also watch for that. See, when you do these evaluations, you bring some awareness to things you may not have thought about before. Um, I could keep my phone across the room so my brain doesn't think so much about checking the time. And then after you do an evaluation, know that that does not mean the next time you go to the gym or talk to a client or sit down to do your calendar that you won't need to make improvements. It just means now you have some data. You have some data to improve, right? You know what you can do differently. You've lifted a weight, you've up-leveled your skill. So the next time you're going to do even better. And then the next time you're going to do better and better and better. Oh, okay. I hope this episode has given you something to think about. Notice where you're hitting resistance and you're allowing that resistance to impair your results, to let your results atrophy. I want you to really like be inspired by this episode to move towards the resistance. So you don't get result atrophy. You're moving towards the growth and you're lifting heavier and heavier weights over time. If you want help moving through resistance, I can be your personal coach. You can book a call with me at dinacataldo.com forward slash strategy session. And just like a personal trainer, I'm going to design a program that's right for you and give you what you need to get the results that you want. All right, my friend, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.